So we have a wonderful panel lined up over here, three panelists. I will take one of them uh, while we wait for the congressman to come. They have all been briefed that they have a chance to make introductory remarks for about three minutes, and then uh, a, a sort of a leading question from me for about two minutes or so. So each of them has about five minutes or so to come in. Uh, to come in, in, uh, into this discussion. Lucy, let me begin with you. Lucy, as everybody knows, is also uh, the executive director of the Thousand Days. And Lucy, this report had nutrition in it. But can you reflect, what did you take away some of the key findings on nutrition? And more importantly, what do you see some of the implications of this report for nutrition? Thank you. Thanks, Rajul. Um, so this report not only has nutrition in it, it's on the front cover, which is a huge accomplishment. Um, and I think that it, you know, it is indicative, I think, of the, um, the more holistic view uh, that um, the UN system, I think, and the world has as a result of the SDGs around the need to address uh, these problems, uh, both you know, food insecurity uh, and malnutrition. Um, I won't go through the numbers. A few things that did strike me. Um, to me, this, this report um, confirms what many of us already know, uh, but it did offer really interesting insights uh, in terms of some of the, the depth of the problems. Um, I was struck, for example, that stunting, we know that about one in four children around the world are stunted. Uh, but in Africa, that number is actually increasing. The number of stunted children uh, is actually going up because of, uh, of population growth, um, despite the, uh, the rates going down. And I think that is uh, devastating. Uh, it's devastating for the continent's future. And especially as we're, the world is moving into a knowledge economy, where we're going to have a, a premium on executive function, on brains, on creativity. Stunted children have stunted brains. They just do not have as, as much of the cognitive capacity uh, and cannot reach their, their full intellectual potential because of malnutrition. So I think that is uh, certainly a, a wake-up call for me. Um, wasting is sort of the the face of, of malnutrition that we that many Americans anyway think of uh, when we think of malnutrition, and um, we will not make. Uh, progress uh, towards child survival and ending preventable child deaths if we do not tackle wasting and if we don't figure out, number one, how to prevent wasting and number two, how to, how to better reach children with treatment. We actually don't know, there are no sort of interventions that we've identified that have been costed in terms of preventing wasting. Um, and I just want to congratulate, I know we're going to get into this, um, the, uh, the authors of the report for really taking a look at all forms of malnutrition. Um, that, you know, just this recognition that diet is the, you know, the single largest cause of premature death around the world and, uh, and we need to tackle all forms of malnutrition holistically. Thank you. Lucy, thank you very much. I want to connect into a point that Homi made, but, uh, but from the other angle, one hears and feels that there is a lot of momentum around investing in nutrition. Is that really the case and are we seeing the benefits of that? Are we reaping the, those, uh, quote-unquote investments that are being made, or do we need to actually find a way to come back to what Homi was saying, basically reverse the curve, make different investments and so forth? Absolutely, and so I, I'm so glad that you brought up the issue of investments because that's something that we at Thousand Days are incredibly focused on. Um, actually, when you look at and you parse out the ODA that goes to nutrition, it's only about a billion dollars, and a lot of that money, uh, unfortunately, is is uh, is treating the management of our failure, which is you know treating uh, severe acute malnutrition. Uh, so we're not clearly not investing anywhere near enough uh, in terms of preventing stunting and, and anemia and, and other forms of malnutrition. So th the money piece is, is critical. I think um, we have been over time, you know, inching slowly upward. There's a there's a political will building um, that has you know taken far too long, as you've identified, Homie. Um, but you know there there is certainly I think uh, a framework. For action, we we have we have a game plan. We have targets. We we costed these targets. We actually know what to do. And now it's it's simply about the leadership at country level, the leadership from donors. Um, so you're right that it shouldn't just focus on when there's a food price uh, crisis that leaders start you know thinking about this and panicking. And by the way, we have a crisis right now. The world, as we know, is in crisis. As this report points out, I strongly recommend that all of you read the, the chapter on conflict. It is extremely well done. 
Thank you very much, Lucy, and I hope we will have a continued exchange during the Q&A.